Eric here at Team Eccentric, bringing you guys a dual commentary video. Haven't really posted a lot of content lately. Been really busy with work and you know busy trying to uh, get my bills in order or things like that. Um, you know, I mean, not that it really uh, pertains to Yu-Gi-Oh or anything, but uh, I'm a type one diabetic, so uh, in order to get uh, insulin and the supplies I need, I needed to switch health insurances, which kind of was taking you know preoccupying a lot of my time. But um, that, you know, none of that really pertains to this, but uh, it does kind of you know hinder uh the amount of time that i put into Yu-Gi-Oh! but uh we're back and we're, we're you know we've been filming some dual videos things like that so i'm actually on the right playing paleo as you can see by my uh innumerable innumerable amount of trap cards that i'm setting and then i normal summon the swap frog uh, attempting to establish uh that early toad trying to uh you know get the negates on early so that i can uh, maintain control of the board and then i bounce the uh, swap frog back for cost and then ditch it with Ro or ditch ronin to special summon it from the hand uh, essentially, uh, <clears throat> effectively setting a toad up while, uh, while, while I also have three back row. Pretty strong board to play into um, going first. But um, yeah, Joe is on the right playing his Grave Keepers. Uh, kind of an awkward matchup because um, and then I banish uh, for cost for Ronin special summon. Um, and then I banish the Swap Frog and then I overlay straight into the toad, wasting no time trying to get the negates on board. Uh, you know, you gotta have the negates nowadays. So, um, Joe's Gravekeepers, uh, it's kind of a, a weird uh, matchup because he can Necro Valley, but I can negate it. And the moment his Necro Valley is negated, it's kind of, uh, you know, it hinders a lot of his plays, but he activates the Necro Valley, and uh, that's uh, essentially uh, the linchpin to his deck. It keeps people from activating cards in the graveyard, as we all know. It's very impressive. Uh, given that it's uh, resolve and sticks, but I negate it and set it with my toad because I am not about to be uh, forced into an awkward position where I have no plays because I used all of my back back row and uh, couldn't do anything. But now I compulse the monster normal summons, then chain reckless greed to draw two. Uh, I figure you know getting the most advantage now and you know keeping keeping his stuff off the board is as optimal as I can get considering in order for gravekeepers to function they need to have a gravekeeper monster as well as a necro valley on board but he he, he scoops it up already um yeah that was a very quick game one yeah th that's the one thing about gravekeepers is in order for them to function they have to have a monster as well as necro valley on board uh which um you know can be very strong given that uh you don't have it as many disruptions as I had there but I just had all the disruptions I had compulse I had the toad to negate things i had you know i mean there's just so many so many things about paleo that make this kind of an awkward matchup for grave keepers but at the same time if he can make his uh if he can make his necro valley stick uh he can keep me from getting my paleo uh, my paleo trap cards back to the field which uh can hinder my game a lot it just depends on um you know his timing and whether or not he decides to play a little more conservatively with his necro valleys considering Olenoides is a card, and Olenoides being a card, uh, in my opinion, honestly makes this matchup a little bit more tilted in my favor, which I suppose is kind of bad uh, to post, but, um, you know, it is it is what it is. That's just Yu-Gi-Oh! for you. Some some decks have outs to other decks things. It's just the way it is. But, um, so, we go into game two, and he goes first, and uh, another thing about his build is he doesn't have Carter Demise right now, so he's kind of relying a lot on like pot of duality and he activates the necro valley um pot of duality and you know the cards like that normal summons priestess activates the necro valley throne for an additional normal summon so he normal summons nobleman and then it passes to me but um and that being said you know it it, it does hint you know it does kind of put his deck in an awkward position so i set one set two set three uh basically i'm setting my entire hand um essentially which is something a paleo can afford to do but now it's his turn and uh, so, uh, as soon as he starts his turn, as soon as he goes into standby phase, I activate Illinois to pop the Necro Valley. I just want to get it off the board uh, as soon as possible. Um, and as soon as he sets one, I activate Canadia. I figure Canadia will set the Priestess since it counts as Necro Valley on the field, so that he no longer has that, um, you know, that that option. So that like, you know, there are no Necro Valleys on the field essentially. And then after that, he activates Raigeki. Have no responses so my one paleo trap is banished uh, that's the thing about the paleo traps is you know when they leave the field after they come back they're banished so it kind of like you know meh but then he uh, 
flips his uh, priestess. Activate Canadian again to flip it. And then chain the Canadian grave to special summon. And now we're kind of at a war we're kind of in a war of attrition, essentially, because my Canadian is 1200, his nobleman is a uh, thousand, so it's kinda of like, oh, uh, your your cards is still somewhat bigger than mine, even though neither of them are too big. But he crashes um, to take 200 points of damage, which is fine. But then he, uh, I flip the uh, Lucigenia, and then chain the Canadian Grave again, and uh, he takes more damage because of Lucigenia. And then after that, he's attempting to summon something from the deck, or set something from the deck rather. And I believe he sets here. The, uh, the flip effect monster that allows him to special summon something from the deck face down, I believe. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it, it has a bunch of rarity. It, can, it came in gold, came in secret, came in ultra. Um, I can't remember what the hell the card's name is. But uh, I know it allows him to special summon a gravekeeper monster face down, I believe, uh, when it's flipped. Uh, it's, a fl it's obviously a uh, flip effect monster. Um, and as you can see, Gravekeepers also kind of build incremental advantage uh, in, a, in a way similar to Paleo, where they just try and um, kind of out-resource you and you know kind of play the slow game. But um, freaking Paleo do the same thing. And the thing about Paleo is, is at least I can you know I can set five and uh, you know just kind of set five into my opponent's board, and not really have too much of a worry so long as they don't have a way to stop my trap cards from going off, like Denko Saka, obviously fucking wrecks my deck but either way um so he sets his monster and he passes to me so um i th i'm trying to think of the best way the best way to go about this um maybe trying to kill him now put him in an early grave here um considering the fact that i have two uh you know level two aquas on board uh technically i can overlay them but i decide to instead of going straight into toad i go into opabinia figuring i can um you know again kind of build a little bit more of a resource pool um, so I'd attach from Opabinia to add an, a Paleozoic Trap card, and I'm figuring Olenoides might be the best option, but, uh, you know, you, you, the thing about Paleo is, like, there's just so, there's so many traps that it's so open-ended that you can add almost anything. I mean, I mean, the deck has a Book of Moon, the deck has a, uh, you know, um, it, it just has so many different resources, but I do add the Olenoides, figuring that if he activates the, uh, Necker Valley, I could blow something up, but at the same time, uh, I set the monster and I pass to him. And Opabini allows me to activate trap, uh, Paleozoic trap cards from my hand, so I'm not too worried about his Necro Valley because I can always just chain my uh, Olenoides, which is really strong. Um, you know, essentially, effectively, it's a, it's it's like evenly matched or an MST in a way where I can just, just throw it down as soon as he does something, but he flip summons the one monster uh, and he flip summons uh, both monsters essentially, and then I drop the uh, Olenoides, and he attempts to um, use the counter trap card, but he doesn't realize that uh, I'm not activating a, an effect, or well, I'm activating a Paleozoic trap card, and that's what he'd have to negate. Um, so he's he, he's negating the uh, the Olenoides rather than uh, negating the Opabini. He thought he was negating the Opabini's activation effect, but it's a continuous effect on the field so long as you have a Paleo a Paleo trap in grave or in hand rather so he flips summons to special summon a monster uh, you can see he's kind of uh you know figuring out what what he wants to summon probably trying to summon something a little bigger uh to put something you know put some board uh, to put some damage on board and uh just reduce my life points a little at, you know at this point uh obviously the matchups kind of tilted in my favor uh though i'm not really playing too aggressively i'm playing a little bit more conservatively a little bit more uh passively um, I mean, granted, Paleo, that's kind of how they play. They play passively until they can kill you. Um, he, that's essentially what he's doing is he's trying to, he's just trying to play a War of Attrition style Yu-Gi-Oh where he just summon, summons the bigger monster and crashes and just destroys things. And then he activates the Necro Valley, which uh, kind of, uh, you know, doesn't really slow me down at this point now that I have uh, Opabinia. Um, I mean, I can literally activate Paleozoic Trap Cards from the hand, which does so much for me. It allows, it puts me, like, way ahead of him. Because, uh, you know, so, so long as uh, I have a Trap Card attached to the 
Oh, and then he summons the the um, Dark Exceeds Rebellion Dragon, thinking maybe he can uh, uh, you know, steal attack points, but he also doesn't realize that Obini actually has zero attack points. So, like, it really wouldn't do anything. And um, it just... Uh, so he f attacks my Ronin Toten with a 1700 body, which basically uh, deals 300 damage to himself. Um, you know, he's not really too uh, uh, experienced with the Paleozoic matchup, um, so he's, he's, he's still learning. Um, and then after that, he attempts to swing over my Opabinia, but I lost wind his uh, Dark Rebellion, figuring that'll, you know, reduce his attack by half and negate its effect. So even when I do summon something, there's nothing he can do about it. And then after that, um, I actually can't chain my Paleozoic Traps because of his Necro Valley. So that's kind of a hindrance, but not too much so that um, it's too bad. But now I activate uh, Opabinia for the last time and get a search. And uh, just reading Opabinia to make sure that its effect where uh, I can activate Paleozoic Traps is continuous even after it has material because I know that it has certain conditions. Um, so I decide to... Add, I believe another Olenoides, I think. I'm pretty positive it's another Olenoides than the third copy, but I'm not too sure. I mean, there, there are different trap cards that I play in the deck, so um, it really just depends. I mean, I play a lot of the Paleozoic uh, lineup. But, yep, there's the Olenoides, um, and I can still activate it from the hand, so I activate it, and I blow up the Necro Valley. Um, it just get, you know it puts me you know just so far ahead of, of of this matchup just being able to do that and then I normal summon the swap frog I send the dupe frog figuring I can get some uh, you know incremental advantage you know link plays with uh, Ronin Toten so I link up into the uh, the star boy and then after that I uh, banish the dupe frog for the Ronin Toten After that, I just go straight into the totally awesome. Then I go battle phase, and I'll go 19 over uh, his, I believe, 17. I'm not too sure, but uh, I know, I know it's uh, my, my, I know my monster's bigger. And then I go 22 over his, uh, his 1250 because it's uh, still under Lost Wind, or 27 rather over 1250 because of it's because it's still under Lost Wind. So then after that, um, that uh, puts a lot of damage on board as well as basically uh, uh, destroys the amount of resources he has. And on top of that, any resource he would draw at this point, I believe, is a top deck. And top decking against Paleo while they have a Toad and a Star Boy really isn't um, the best. But now during his standby phase, I detach and uh, I special summon... Um, a level two aqua from the deck. I special summon the Duke Frog, figuring that uh, uh, if he does manage to draw some kind of, you know, comeback card um, that you know can put my toad away, I can at least have the Duke Frog to protect it from battle. Um, and on top of that, I mean, I have three. I have in total three aquas on board that allows me to tribute any one of them for Toad's effect. So uh, that is certainly a thing. Um, but then he passes turn, I believe. So he, he passed his turn, and then I, uh, during my standby phase, I detach for Toad's effect, special summon Swap Frog. And then I use Swap Frog's effect to send another Swap Frog from deck to grave. And I set one. Vanish to special Ronin. I overlay into the, uh, I believe I go into... Yeah, I think I go into the Cat Shark here. Um, yep, I go into the Cat Shark, figuring I can put more damage on board. Um, and I detach and target my Totally Awesome to make it uh, double its original attack. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of damage on board right there. I'm in after that. I link up once more into another Mistar Boy, figuring, you know, make another Toad, two negates, uh, banish for the uh, effect of Ronin. Um, and then I overlay again. Totally awesome. And battle, swing in for game. And that's the game.
So um, I know this this one was uh, relatively short, guys. I uh, appreciate all the views you guys give us. I know uh, you know I haven't been posting a lot lately. There's just been so much crap going on in life. You know, uh, I've you know been switching between health insurances and and you know working a lot and you know just just you know doing adult things, which uh, kind of uh, prevent me from playing the game as much as I'd like to. But um, as you can see, I'm trying to branch out and try different decks. I know you guys are probably sick of me, uh, you know, playing Mermail and you know as much as I love the deck, you know, the deck right now is just not as good in my opinion. It's it's very lackluster in terms of what it can do. Uh, you know, a lot of our power plays in that deck got hit and, you know, it's understandable because the deck, th those cards had to get hit, but it makes the deck a little tougher to play anyway. And that being noted, I figure, you know, it allows me to branch out and try new things. Um, granted, I'm still going to be playing Mermel. You still will see Mermel uh, dual videos and deck profiles and things like that. It's just they're not going to be um, as... Uh, you know, frequent and as competitive as, as they were before, at least until we get the Mermaid Link, which I hope is in dual power, but I doubt it. That would be great if it were, though. Um, either way, uh, soon enough, we will also be getting Cherubini, which is something that uh, I hope you guys uh, are happy about. I know I'm looking forward to it, because I can play Burning Abyss. Uh, it's one of my favorite decks, honestly, so that'll be a thing, as well as I'm playing Salamangrate and uh, Thunder Dragon. I'm trying a bunch of different variants of Thunder Dragon. I tried the Chaos version. I tried the, the, pure, the pure version. Uh, right now, I'm trying the Danger Guard Dragon version, um, but you know, obviously with the cheaper dangers, I'm too broke to afford Tsuchinokos, Nessies, and uh, Jackalopes. But uh, regardless, guys, I appreciate all the views you guys give us, um, and uh, any support uh, you guys can lend to us would be great. Uh, other than all that, uh, you know, if you see anything that you uh, notice, like any misplays or anything like that, or if you have any constructive criticisms, uh, leave the leave your comments in the comment section below. Also. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, hit that notification bell. We're going to start uh, trying to be a little bit more um, involved with the channel. You know, so, like I like the channel, honestly, like sometimes it, it it doesn't seem as much of a priority to me only because I have, you know, other things going on. Um, you know, I am a sponsored skateboarder, so like that's definitely, you know, it takes precedent. But uh, I try and I try and get to the to the things that I can for you guys, you know, try and uh, focus on the channel whenever I get the chance, whenever I get the opportunity. But um yeah, you know, life just kind of takes hold and you got to do what you got to do. But uh, Eric here, Team Eccentric, and I'm signing out. Rate and subscribe. Leave your comments and ideas in the comment section below. And don't hesitate to give us respectful suggestions on content you want to see. Eric on behalf of the team saying take care and Team Eccentric out.